Lost Ark is a top-down Diablo-like MMO game coming to us from South Korea by the publishing and developing hands and minds of Smilegate and Tripod Studios, respectively. This is a free-to-play title that's been around the Korean, Japanese, and Russian servers for some time and has garnered a reputation as one of the better Korean MMOs. If you're not in the know, a lot of MMO titles that come from one of our eastern neighbors are notorious for being free-to-play legally, but having a lot of content walled off by payment to the extent of all gamers just should not be dealing with and dreading. Pay to win, essentially. Boosts, level ups, gear, you name it. The worst business practices that involve you paying to get better at a game you should be playing that we here over in the West would be screeching at when EA and Activision gets the green greedy itch and is very common across the ocean, specifically in South Korea. However, Lost Ark has very little of these pay-to-win aspects, save for boosting your character's level to max, but given that the end game for PvE play is based more on gear than it is level, and level is more just a method of earning the character and learning the abilities, and two, it's a free-to-play game, I personally don't see the bad business practice here where you're saving yourself time from having to essentially... Pick a character class, which can go into multiple different subclasses, and just re-leveling the same thing over and over again after you've done the first two or three characters. See, unlike MMOs I love, primarily Final Fantasy XIV, Lost Ark isn't as strict on its party comp and demands for total player and class cohesion. Yes, you definitely want to have an understanding of how your class is supposed to be played and what skills to focus on for your own personal fun and success, but this is primarily a Diablo-like game, where as long as you're hitting the skills and not getting hit by the waves of enemies or bosses, and you're at least drinking your health insurance juice to keep from getting Friday'd by every other boss in the game, then you're tolerated by both the world and your peers. Whereas in those other games where you're more densely focused on roleplay, no, not that roleplay, if you're not taking the time to learn your class slowly over time, you're actually going to hinder everyone else's play. Lost Ark is built around you just knowing how and when to dodge or block, or use any ability to hit something. It's more active, less strict, and a little bit more free-flowing. You have to play the class the way you want to play, not the way you have to play it. And that's what got me interested in trying out Cowboy Devil May Cry Gunslinger Simulator, because it looked like a game I could sit down, get decent with, feel cool, and blow up some demons. And it is that exactly. To my surprise, the gameplay for Lost Ark is as satisfying as the trailers make it to look, though it does take a few hours of tutorials, story, and levels to start biting into the meat of this half-magic, half-tech omelette. But in taking my time leveling and seeing how this game wants to present itself to players, enjoying their first time running to max level the old-fashioned way, I found something that I believe many other content creators have overlooked. In many games like this, MMOs or just loot and shoot games, there is sometimes a disconnect between the journey to and the destination of max level and late game. One of the more annoying habits of old school MMO fans that I've personally noticed and grown to be annoyed by is that they tend to want to rush through everything the game has to offer to do the biggest bosses, dungeons, and raids for both gear and, well, the fact that you're fighting a full-size dragon god versus living plants and spiders the size of a Doberman. I get why we want that, I get why we want to immediately or as quickly as possible jump into the big crazy battles, but it's so sought after and so tunnel visioned on that I just love using the phrase not seeing the forest through the trees. How can you know if you even like the game, let alone the end game, if you're not willing to level a character through the main story and quest line? These are the moments where you can mess up the most, experiment the most, and yet invest the least amount of time and or money to really see if the overall experience is something you want. If you're five hours into an MMO or really any RPG and the leveling process is such a chore that you'd rather go to work, then you shut the game off. In this, we're not arguing that you're ruining players' fun by rushing and not knowing your classes, so we've already gone over that you can play at whatever pace you technically want and have the free flow of playing however you want, so this is less of an objective argument to not properly level arc, which is good because I'm a lot better at arguing subjective points. Okay, first, 
Lost Ark does a damn good job of presenting its story, dungeons, and pacing even from the prologue. Not really the tutorial though. If you're new to the world in the game, you get to open with detailed art animations and videos showing each of your class's strengths and variants. From the Angie boys to the Angie girls, to the multiple means of connecting fist to face, to my personal choice, casting the magics of bullets. After you choose Gun Wizard, you get to see a short still image animatic like thing telling you a story of the beginning of your adventure that you had nothing to do with. Then you meet a stripper angel who lets you playtest your character before you commit to grinding and gathering money for cooler toys. But once that's done, you go through a mini adventure where you're hired to work with a bunch of cell swords to find ancient civilizations and treasure, and it starts very strong. Getting you to a destination, teaching you the basics of button prompts and how to use skills, which for this game, pro tip, don't worry about using skills and moving, just focus on one or the other. Plant your feet, stare them down, and make like Danny DeVito. There's just enough monsters for you to go ham in these opening bits, as well as a decent boss fight at the end gate, to let you try and adjust to what skill combos you want. Some skills you're going to hold the button longer to keep the ability going, others you're just going to one-two combo into the next one, but you'll soon discover by taking your time and mixing and matching even the earliest stuff, what is best for you, and what combination is going to help you get the flow of the fight better. There is also where you get your first taste of how the in-game cinematics are going to work. The rush of monsters monsters, the altering camera angles, unavoidable fact that this game does not worry too much on facial animations and lip syncing. It's charming! For a free-to-play title, the fact that the team goes this hard on trying to get you invested even slightly in what's happening, at least enough to hype you up for what's about to happen in front of you, is very welcome. I'm a huge sucker for games that go out of their way to substitute a good written story for just fun, entertaining moments. From here, you go through the proper beginning to the main story, get introduced to some teenage daughters OC, and the leveling process begins. First off, something that really clicks with me is how quests, both main and side, are placed. The story of the game keeps you going in a linear forward motion where you're automatically be asked to go from one teleportation, camp, or town spot as you go down the path to the next. But the side quests, too, either are laid out on a path you're already taking, or that the few that are way out in the open open up additional dungeons and secrets to explore. Those side quests, too, aren't very tedious, to an extent. Play any RPG and you'll pick up a lot of go here, kill so many of this enemy, or pick up so many of a certain item, but every quest leads to the next camp or safe zone, and instead of having to collect several of one thing, many of these collect quests just ask you to do this one time, or move on after you just do the one click. This is refreshing to someone like me because a lot of these quests in any RPG are used strictly to just get EXP gain or some item gain your first time through. But so many of Lost Ark's contemporaries, even my favorite one, will really make you waste half an hour trying to collect skulls or trees or acorns or whatever and make you have to go all the way back to where you first got the quest, making you trek back and forth very tediously. Not Lost Ark. You pick up as you go and you get moving and in doing so you'll already unlock the next forward or find a secret map that leads you to a little mini monster and boss rush with some nice loot for yourself. Or a whole ass side dungeon that lets you put some of your newly gotten gains of gear and skills to the test. And those dungeons are no joke. You can run them solo and on normal or hard mode, and you'll be fine if you do choose the faster, easiest option, but the game really shines with how much you have to pay attention and have your personal combos set if you take the time to matchmake and do the harder variant of the dungeon, which also gives you better loot. Bosses and enemies hit hard, and the game naturally provides lots of health potions, since there aren't any dedicated healers, which both helps you recover from mistakes you have to make early on to learn, but I also think helps players feel a bit braver for trying something that's going to kick their ass. Even with the better gear you gain, you'll feel the gradual progression of needing to pay attention and learn your class, and personally, I feel like it happens very naturally. All those kills, so many side quests, because you aren't out of your way and there's no reason not to do them as you go along, you're getting constant practice with your positioning, ability combo management, and your health so that when it's time to jump into a dungeon for gear or for story, you're already very comfortable and competent enough to not die over and over again. Where in other games, these tasks would be tedious, I find that Lost Ark actually smartly positions and paces and respects your time and effort and takes where they are not just excuses for EXP, but good practice to get you comfortable with the mechanics. 
and this just keeps going as you unlock more abilities. With the Gunslinger, I eventually made it where I was swapping out my starting abilities for newer ones and customizing my personal weapon swaps and playstyle, and still having all the time in the world to get used to that new system. So that when I eventually did get to level 26 and the first major story arc came to a close, not only did I know how to fight, I looked damn good doing it. But now finally, on the topic of looking good, Lost Ark's combat is great, fantastic even, and I've only just scratched the surface with my time. But do you know what the difference between a good game and a great game is? Presentation! Not all dungeons have these. You'll be playing a handful of dungeons that are just simply for gear and for fun, but those dungeons are just a part of the progression of learning the combat and your skill formatting. By this point in the game, the training wheels are off and Ark aims to impress to where I ended the beta at level 26 and raided a giant fucking castle, fought an army of knights, wizards, and demons for the hell of it, and then kicked the ever-living shit out of a giant cow devil. It's fun. Plain, simple, fun, and sometimes really stupid, but oh so damn good. But let's pump the brakes a bit before we crash headfirst at the end of that little red bar on your screen. I've been talking in favor of Lost Ark and all that I like and kind of skimming over the cons of the game. The combat is fantastic, the presentation does get really fun, and Rule of Cool becomes the bible of how to set a scene in this world. But I really cannot stress enough that this game is not going to sell you on characters or narrative. At least it hasn't on me yet, and I got from level 10 to 26 with a good amount of hours into the closed beta. I will fight to my dying breath over how good FF14's narrative gets with all the years it's been going on, and the next video I make is actually going to be something on a little project from Riot that I've been screaming for wanting for years. Basically, I'm a story guy when it comes to gaming. But I won't be the first to tell you, nor the last, that not every game needs a great story. Not every generic simple plot has to be a detriment to a game, even if it is a weakness. The voice actors aren't bad, but there's nothing inspired for what's being said or written, and honestly, when you get off the adrenaline high of these fights, it feels like a whole lot happened in just a small amount of time. Thus why I call it stupid. From 10 to 15 levels, you're coasting and maybe overstaying the lackluster simplicity of it just enjoying the combat and pacing, and then when level 15 hits, this game takes all the adrenaline and only stops for brief moments before doubling down. What I'm saying is Lost Ark is not deep, and you shouldn't be coming into the game expecting it to be deep. It's a world, characters, struggle, and events that gives us an excuse to shoot, stab, and explode things in awesome moments with fun gameplay. Those moments are given just enough care in the presentation department to be memorable for those moments, and at no point does Lost Ark ever come off to me like it's trying to convince me that this is all important or bigger than it seems. It's just a giant theme park of magic and tech action figures being slapped together with pretty lights and sound effects, and sometimes it's okay to have a game like that, especially since, like I've said before, it doesn't waste your time. But if that's not to your liking, you're completely valid in passing on this game and sinking your time and effort in something that's a bit more thought-provoking. There's plenty of RPGs out there that really sell themselves not just on their gameplay, but on their story. Not all games need to copy and be the same to thrive and be included within a genre, and in the case of this, I feel Lost Ark is on the right path to be accepted as a fun MMO, coasting on the combat and bosses and events over any story or character. But I'd love to hear what you all think, as everything I say on this channel is drowning in my personal subjective bias. Maybe you found the placements of side quests to be tedious and pointless, or you didn't enjoy how long it took to get the new skills that you found yourself too comfortable with what you had already, maybe you like the edgy kind of shipping storyline let me know down below share this video with everyone you know and i'll see you guys in the next video